Hi everyone. For this week's lab, we're going to be studying the properties of air resistance. For this lab, you'll need a few pieces of equipment. First, you'll need a mobile phone so you can take videos of your setup. You're going to need an object of known length. This I have is a little ruler that is 61 centimeters long, so I can have this in my frame for measuring properties, uh, measuring distances. And finally, we have the standard basket coffee filter. The reason why we want to look for this kind of basket flat top coffee or flat bottom coffee filters is that they are going to be really good at falling and keeping the same orientation as they fall down to the ground. The physics of what's happening is that the coffee filter falls down. The, as it falls down, it gets a speed v going in the vertical direction. The free body diagram for this situation looks like this. The weight is pulling down, that's the mg term, and then there's a drag force pulling back, and we use a turbulent model for the drag force that looks like this. Uh, it has uh, f sub d is 1 half rho a c sub d times v squared, and those uh, coefficients mean, the, or those variables mean the following things. Rho is the mass density of the fluid that the material that the coffee filter is falling through. So that's kilograms per meter cube, and that's the mass density of air here. The area of the object is given in meters squared. The drag coefficient is a dimensionless number, usually around one, and the speed is given in meters per second. That's the v squared term. The drag coefficient depends on the shape of the object, and the long-term goal of this lab is to estimate the drag coefficient of the coffee filter. Here are the different objects, and they're given uh, several different objects, and they're associated drag coefficients. And you see that most of them are around one, unless the body is extremely aerodynamic and well streamlined. The A in that formula is the area that the object is presenting to the air as it falls through. So this picture shows the coffee filter as it's falling downward, sort of from a top view, um, actually resting on my table, but uh, the area is the area that you see here of the white. And we're going to approximate that as a circle. So we can measure the radius of the coffee filter uh, and then just say that the area that we care about is uh, pi r squared for this. And you can make an estimate of this radius and the associated area. As the object drops, the speed will increase. This means there's more air resistance because the drag force depends on the speed squared. As a result, there is less net acceleration, and eventually the object speed will rise from zero up to something that's called the terminal velocity. It approaches this asymptotically as it goes on, and we use the variable v sub t for the terminal velocity. Given the physics that we know, we can go ahead and derive the value of the terminal velocity by saying that the coffee filter is going to be in equilibrium. In that case, the drag force balances the force of gravity, and we can solve for v sub t in that equation and arrive at the expression seen here. Since we're going to define the plus y direction as going upward, the velocities that we measure will actually be negative. So our actual velocity versus time curve is going to look a little more like this, where we asymptote to a negative terminal velocity. The magnitude of that terminal velocity is still root 2mg over rho ac, uh, but we actually have an expression for velocity as a function of time that's given here in this equation uh, below the terminal velocity or the terminal speed. And so that is that the velocity as a function of time is the terminal speed times this ratio, uh, 1 minus e to the 2t over t naught divided by 1 plus e to, to the 2t over t naught, where t naught is just a characteristic time scale, and it's actually defined in terms of the terminal velocity as shown here. It's just the terminal velocity divided by the acceleration due to gravity. In part two of the lab, you'll be picking a value of the terminal velocity that best matches your v versus t graph uh, that you get from your data. So we'll actually be fitting this model to the data by adjusting our terminal velocity. To collect data, you're going to want to film coffee filters falling down to the ground. The experimental variable we'll be studying in this lab is the number of filters we're dropping. And we like these basket-style coffee filters because you can stick two of them together 
and make a nice stack, and that's going to have the same shape as just a single coffee filter. So we're going to take the filter, and all you do is you hold it up in a video frame like this with a ruler of known length in it and release. And you'll notice it will drift gently down to the ground. Then we add more coffee filters together into the stack, experimenting with one, two, three, four, and five filters in a stack, and then you just drop each one, noticing that it falls faster and faster and reaches a higher terminal velocity the more filters you add to the experiment. For data collection, all you need to do is make videos of the individual stacks, one, two, three, four, and five coffee filters falling to the ground. And now, let's go take a look at the analysis. After completing our analysis in Logger Pro, we'll have a set of data, including the x and y velocities after dropping some coffee filters. We can go ahead and select the data that we want to include in our analysis, and we can go ahead and hit Command C to copy it. And then if we go into a spreadsheet program, uh, like Google Sheets here, we can just paste it. So I use Control or Command C, V. And then I'm going to go ahead to keep my spreadsheet neat, insert the data, and insert the quantities. Uh, so it's time in seconds, x position in meters, y position in meters, uh, x velocity, and y velocity. So again, we can uh, take a look at the time as the velocities drop off here. And uh, I will actually want the time since the movie began. So I'm going to take uh, A2, which is the first entry in the time value. And I want to subtract it off where the video starts, or the video analysis starts, which also happens to be the entry in A2, or 8258 seconds. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that on down. And what that'll do is that'll give me the time since the video began. So this is the actual time coordinate we want. And we're going to take a look at what happens when we make a chart of the y velocity as a function of time. So if I say go ahead and insert a chart, it very helpfully gives me a chart that I really don't care about. Um, because it's individual data, we want a scatter plot. Um, and I want it to be x uh, axis should have the time in seconds, and the y axis should just be the y velocity. So I'm just going to remove it. And you can see that we start out at a velocity near zero, and we roll down and become flat around here, uh, probably after about six tenths of a second or so. Uh, the data are roughly constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, this section, and just like we did with the pressure, I'm going to ask for the average value from about 0.6 seconds on. So I want the average value, so I'm going to say equals average, and I'm going to grab this band here uh, down to uh, the end of the data set. And that's going to give me my estimate of a terminal velocity in meters per second, so v sub t in meters per second is about this value. I could go ahead and use the standard deviation uh, function to uh, figure out the error in the terminal velocity, but it, we don't actually end up using that analysis for the lab. Uh, we, just for uh, giggles, we'll go ahead and uh, calculate it. And so we've measured the terminal velocity and the error is 0.08 in meters per second. Um, so this is the information we'll need. We end up in our analysis looking at the scatter between the terminal velocity points in a linear uh, relationship. So that means we don't actually need the errors here. We could fold them in, but that's totally stats 252 level stuff. So uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. All right. This gives you an example of how you go about studying one set of coffee filters. Uh, what you'll need to do is repeat this experiment for one, two, three, four, and five coffee filters. And you should see uh, and make a linear uh, graph between uh, the number of filters and the terminal velocity that you measure.
So when you've done the analysis for uh, a series of coffee filters, one, two, three, four, and five, you should have several series and several estimates of the terminal velocity. And you'll be able to come up with data for one, three, two, four, five. I did my experiment out of order. Uh, and you can make a plot of the terminal, or you can use the measured values of the terminal velocity. And then you can also go ahead and square those. So here uh, for this data, I've gone ahead and said, I want the terminal velocity estimate for one filter and I want to square it and then I just copied that on down. Uh, and at this point we can make a chart uh, of these data so we can insert the chart and I actually don't care about the terminal velocity but I should have this linear relationship between n and v uh, t squared which I've just called vt2 and you can see this is roughly a linear relationship so I can go ahead and do analysis by performing a linear estimate over those data. So line est of uh, the y data, uh, I need the x range of the data, and then as always I want to say true, true to get the linear estimate, and this gives me the slope and uh, error that I'm looking for, and the y-intercept and its error that I'm looking for. All right, that should give you everything you need to tackle this lab. Uh, if you have any questions, post them to Piazza and we will get to them promptly. The final piece of analysis we'll have to do is fit a velocity versus time curve to the data for n equals 10 coffee filters. I've already taken a trial data set and added in the time since drop column by subtracting off the first frame in the movie's timestamp uh, from all the data in column A, giving me the second column here in F. Uh, then what I want to do is make a chart of the V versus Y, uh, V of Y data. So I'll just insert a chart and get a nice little scatter chart out there, uh, like so. I need to add a time axis to that, so I can just click on the select data range and I'll click and select uh, the same points here and that'll add time data uh, to my measurements. The last thing I need to do is add in a column for my model data. So I'll just give a column here that's V model, uh, which is the Y model velocity as a function of time. And so what I need to do is write down an expression for that in terms of the terminal velocity and T naught. I need those as parameters, and if I look at my data set there, it sure looks like my terminal uh, velocity is going to go down to something like uh, 2.0 meters per second or so. So that's just the magnitude of it. And then I need that t naught parameter, or t0, so I'll say that that's equal to my terminal velocity divided by speed uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second. Then what I do is I type out an expression for my term, uh, my model velocity in terms of these parameters. So I say that's equal to the terminal velocity times, and then we put in that ratio here. So one plus, uh, one, sorry, one minus x of two times t since drop divided by the t naught. So that's this cell. Uh, Good, and then I'll divide that by the same thing, except with a plus sign, two times, uh, that time divided by the t naught. Close all my brackets, and I get a nice expression of zero. And I can go ahead and paste this down, and I get a bunch of errors. And the reason is, is that the cell is actually propagating so that it's measuring the uh, it's moving to a place where the uh, t naught is not divided. We don't want it to propagate the cells. So to anchor uh, the position of the uh, cells that you're using in this formula, uh, we want the terminal velocity to always be i56, and we want the terminal, the t naught, to always be from i57. So what we do is we put dollar signs in front of those in the formula. And now when I copy paste this formula. I can just paste it on down and get an expression that runs from zero up to about minus two. Now what I'll do is I'll go into the chart. And what I'm gonna to want to add is uh, this new data, the model data, to the y-axis. So I'm gonna say add a series, and I'm gonna go ahead and select that model data column and put that in there. And that shows me the curve here uh, for my model here in the red data points. 
And what I can do is I can adjust my parameters, so I can change 1.5, and that'll update my graph. So 1.8 looks a little bit better, 1.9, oh, that's looking better, maybe 1.95 or something. And that's a pretty good agreement between my data uh, throughout the curve. And so from this, I would have estimated that the terminal uh, velocity for this expression is about 1.95 meters per second.